Hey folks, welcome back to the Mark Kelly Farm YouTube channel. We're not going to be on the farm today. We're going on another field trip. We actually purchased a spot at a local benefit auction for a guest spot on the local radio show, the morning show. So we're headed there right now. We're going to uh, sit in with the, the guys there at our local radio station and talk a little bit. I was into radio way back in the day, so it was something I was interested in. So we uh, we donated that fundraiser and actually won that spot. So we're going to bring you the footage because they, uh, they post on YouTube also. So we'll bring you that footage so you can check it out. And we have a caller on the line. Didn't get a chance to find out who we have, so let's find out who we're talking to. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? We are doing well. Who who do we have on the phone here? This is Lois. Lois, it's good to have you on today. Happy Monday to you. You survived the weekend. We did. Good. Good. Here's Brent with your question. Okay, Lois, uh, we're asking questions about Saturday Night Live, folks, and who starred on the show. This particular performer was on the show from 1986 to 1993. He was the church lady. Who are we talking about? Dana Carvey, Harry Shear, Albert Brooks, or John Lovitz? Dana Carvey. Oh, of course it was. And, Lois, because you've answered correctly, we've got a certificate that's going to get you a free personal pan pizza, one topping at Pizza Hut in Broken Bow. So come on out and see us when you can. Awesome. Thanks so much. I really enjoy the mornings. Ah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. It's uh, 7.52, almost 7.53. couple notes here. Good morning. Found my Eclipse glasses from 2017. That's from Deb. So she's good to go today for the Eclipse. And Lori Holman says, good morning, Lost some uh, uh, fascia, uh, fascia here uh, from the wind over the weekend and moved pipe and even a culvert with the wind that we had. So, yeah, we had some strong winds out there. All right, let's meet our DJ of the day here oh, this good. morning. All right. And we'll just ask you to introduce yourself, sir. Uh, Mark Cardoza, one of the resident here locally south of town. All right, Mark. And you purchased the breakfast show... Uh, at which event? It was the uh, the silent auction for the fundraiser. Oh, okay. For the, I think, the gentleman that works at Nebraska State Bank there. Yeah, for Kyle Stringham. Kyle yeah. Stringham, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, welcome. Glad to be here. It's, yeah, it's good to have you in. Uh, let's just talk a little bit, uh, uh, first of all, about what you do and a little bit about your background. I'm retired. I retired out of law enforcement uh, 25 years in California. Uh, moved out here almost four years ago now. Uh -huh. I'd been visiting for a lot of years. My family, some of my family lived out here. So uh, we would come out. My dad started coming out and helping my Uncle Disc and stuff before harvest. And he got so old that he couldn't do it anymore. So I kind of took his place. I started coming out and helping my uncle and told my wife, if we ever moved out of California, it's going to be to Broken Bow, Nebraska. So uh -huh. this is where we ended up. That's nice. And we're glad we're glad you did. And so, even though you're retired, you're you're maybe putting in a, a few hours more than you suspected. Yeah, I was helping out some local farmers, driving truck, hauling some corn for them for a while. But I kind of re-retired now because we want to do more hunting and camping and fishing during those times. So mm -hmm. harvest gets a little hectic. Things at home start slipping because I was doing so many hours. So I've kind of re-retired now. <laughs> I run a. Uh, a local YouTube channel here in town. We're well, not in town, uh, but here in the area. So, covering all homestead type stuff, and so we're having fun with that. My wife, uh, full time nurse at Callaway. Okay. So, she uh, was a she was a nurse out in California. It's where we met. I tell everybody we met in jail because we both worked there. <laughs> <laughs> I was a sergeant in jail, and she worked for medical there in the jail. So that's where we met. And cops and nurses are supposed to be like the perfect couple, and I can attest to that because she's a fantastic woman. 
There That's you go. Great. That's a good story. Well, we were kidding around about California earlier because uh, our friend Kurt Crowley is a big fan of the Dodgers and, and other sports teams there. Um, and I think, you know, California, I think sometimes we forget how beautiful a state it is along the coast. And I think um, from talking, I had a, a daughter-in-law that lived, that grew up there, and uh, then uh, my w- wife's family lived actually in the L.A. area. Yeah. Um, but you, it's like any state, if you can get out of the city, there's some beautiful country, small towns, nice people, I'm guessing. Absolutely. The people don't realize the Central Valley of California is basically just like it is here. It's all farmland. All farmers, uh, good God-fearing folks living there. Um, unfortunately, it's the larger population centers that kind of control everything. Mm-hmm. So the politics get a little weird, and uh, the rules and the regulations, it, it's really hard to farm there now. So um, a lot of people are struggling, and um, I just had to go. It was time for me to get out of there. <laughs> yep. And, you know, I didn't have the means to do it before I retired, so... After I retired, we we pulled the plug and, and left. And I'll tell you, it's like a 50-year a 50, 50 time warp from California to here. Um, the way people live here now and the way they, they treat each other and, and the climate here is like it was 50 years in California, like in the early 70s when mm-hmm. I grew up. Kids can still be kids. You know, you can go to a, a ball game and turn your kids loose and you just can't do that out in California anymore. So yeah. I wish I could get my kids and my grandkids out here because that would be so nice. But I've got, you know, my youngest daughter's 30 years old and my granddaughter, I'd love to get her out here. She comes out and visits for three months every summer. So Oh, good. Or not three months, three weeks, excuse me. But uh, she has a great time out here. But I, I just wish she could grow up out here yeah. and kind of have it like I did out there in the mm. 70s. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it started changing about then in a, a lot of places, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, the coast, there's only a few towns that you can still go to on the coast that are real nice places to visit. Monterey being one of them. San Diego is still kind of a nice area. But uh, a lot of those towns, it's just not a good time when you go anymore. So mm-hmm. it, it's rough. Well, one of the things that, as you know, we're not used to here is um, taking an hour to go a very short distance to and from work we, and when we decide we want to go somewhere or we want to go get something to eat or you know whatever the case may be we can actually walk most of the time <laughs> but we're, we're a little spoiled we get in our cars and and we're down and back to our house in 10 15 minutes i was amazed at like the dmv here when you register your vehicles california it's a three-hour wait no matter what hmm. day you go here we walked in and walked right up to the counter we were gone in five minutes yeah it was it was pretty nice a lot of us uh out in this neck of the woods aren't as you know since you've been here and coming here for so long we're not real fond of standing in line (laughs) no and i was surprised too how far people will drive in nebraska and think it nothing of it you know because everything was in 15 20 minutes of us where we lived and out here it's nothing to drive three hours i mean (laughs) we drove clear to what is it dalton for a a a sporting event one Uh time and i'm like that was a long day it's uh, pretty wild. I remember my aunt, when she would be going to get parts for my uncle or something, she I'm going to go get some parts. You want to go? And I'm like, well, how far are you going? She's, oh, it's about three and a half hours up north northeast. And I'm like, no, go ahead. I'll be here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely uh, different. There, there's there's some things about being in larger places that are nice. That there's lots to do. There's lots of different places to eat there's lots of different entertainments and that sort of thing Um, yeah but like you say we're we're willing to drive to omaha or lincoln to go see a show oh absolutely i i recently just flew out to california for a week to visit the kids and and catch up with some old friends out there and i definitely hit some of my favorite restaurants and all that while i was there yeah because uh you know we got good selections here in town but uh Whenever I go somewhere, I turn it into a food run. Yeah. My, every every time we schedule to go somewhere, I'm always on the internet. Look, okay, where are we going to eat while we're there? Yeah. But uh, we got some places in Kearney we really like going. Mm-hmm. There's a couple places I'll drive just to Kearney to go eat. Yeah. Well, I think we're all a little that way when we travel at all. That's that's a big part of uh, 
traveling and vacations and so forth is eating different foods. Yeah, I'm definitely a foodie, and that's part of my trip whenever I go somewhere. <laughs> well, I want to learn more, and hopefully uh, we can talk a little bit about your YouTube project. Sure, sure. And uh, whatever you want to talk about, it's your show. We also are going to uh, uh, have the grocery cart specials after the news and weather uh, here this morning, and uh, Brent will take care of that for us. But, uh, Mark, it's nice to have you in. It's nice going to be fun, fun having you here for the show. Uh, wanted to tell Brent right off. Yes. Stroke his ego a little bit. Oh, good. <laughs> Hands down, you're one of the best sports casters I've ever heard on any media. Oh, wow. You know, the way you cover the sports around here, and, and you know the game, and you know the people playing, just amazing. And I've, I've heard a lot of people around town talking about that, about your sports casting, just amazing. But we started the YouTube channel uh, basically when we moved out here. I don't know what possessed me to do it. It just kind of happened. All right. Uh, my kids aren't here with me, and my granddaughter's not here with me, so a lot of the focus was getting a lot of the stuff that I do out there where they can see it in the future because I'm not there with them right now where I have time, you know, now that I'm retired to teach them this kind of stuff. And the work schedule really didn't permit that mm -hmm. uh, when they were younger out there. So that was really my focus was to, you know, the family recipes and how to do this and how to do that. We cover everything from canning, gardening, processing your own meats, uh, your own animals, um, just about everything having to do with homestead. I mean, it's a vast array of stuff that we do. Uh, we just turned over 14,000 subscribers now. Gosh. So we're getting a pretty good fan base, and uh, we're not real commercialized like some of the other channels where they're constantly trying to sell you something. Or Our goal is not to make money on the platform, so we kind of do everything for free. We make a little bit of ad money, but that kind of goes back in the channel where we've invested into the community like this fundraiser that mm -hmm. we did. and. We sponsor lots of school stuff, uh, school fundraisers, and sponsored a couple kids in softball this year and try to give back to the community a little bit. That's fantastic. We'll find out more about that, and also I'd like to talk about your career when Absolutely. we come back after we take this news break. You're listening to The Breakfast Show on a Monday. You are listening to The Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. Go, go, go! On KCNI, KPBN, Broken Bow, Nebraska. Mark Cordoza is our guest today. He purchased The Breakfast Show uh, in the Kyle Stringham Benefit, and we appreciate Mark coming in today. We also have, uh, I just noticed here too, uh, Christy Trumbull's coming in uh, to talk about the Food Bank of the Heartland. She'll be in a little bit later on in the show. And in the 9 o'clock hour, Ideal Realty's on our guest schedule as well. Uh, Mark was going to ask you a little bit about uh, your uh, career in law enforcement. You want to kind of tell us about that? Now, folks, if you're just tuning in, Mark uh, lived out in California for many years. Grew up out there. Grew up out there and then uh, became part of the law enforcement there. Yeah, like well, grew up on a dairy. Uh, my dad was a herdsman all my young life, so I grew up on a dairy out there. And then after turned 18, mom was going to start charging me rent so i said i'm going to start paying rent on my own place i'm going to be paying rent and i didn't realize that uh utilities came with that so <laughs> that was a hard transition but uh worked many jobs up into law enforcement i was an emt for a while a volunteer firefighter for a long time um did everything from welding to construction you name it and then finally settled into my lifelong career 25 years law enforcement and i worked uh, adult detention, so in the in the jail environment, and then I had some auxiliary stuff going on on the outside. I was a range master, uh, was on the underwater recovery team, uh, ran that team for a while. Uh, lots of different stuff outside the department as well, which kept me pretty busy. I was uh, president of the DSA board for a while and did lots of stuff, lots of opportunities with them. It was fun. And And when you had those outside opportunities, I got to imagine that was kind of a nice mix from day to day in in the detention side of things. Yeah, it was a good break. Yeah. Um, it it was nice to get out, and a lot of the stuff I already enjoyed doing because people had always told me growing up, find something you like doing and figure out how to wait a way to get paid for it. So yeah. <laughs> the diving and the shooting was fantastic when we'd we'd be out doing that, doing training days and stuff like that. I was instructor at the academy too, so that took me out quite a bit. But really loved 
the diving portion of it, and I missed that the most because mm-hmm. uh, that was a big part of what we were doing. We were uh, pretty busy with that and recovered a lot of stuff. Had a lot of a lot of pretty gruesome stuff too, but that comes with the the program. So yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of that's not that. Um much fun is it well it's all black water diving out there you once you get underwater you can't see anything so most of us would just close our eyes and then you can just kind of feel it kind of it enhances your other senses when you close your eyes because basically like high beams in the fog if you you have a light on under there you can't see anything right i mean your hand right here you can't see it so it's it's tough diving but Mm. that's what you did yeah a lot of people like how can you go look for drowning victims you know in the dark water and all that and I'd always tell them it's not that stuff that would bother me. It's the live stuff down there that scares you. Mm. Oh, I suppose, yeah. That was going to be my st- question. The big fish. and uh-huh. We had one call where there was a fix that was just knocking me around. And no kidding. I was ready to come out, so luckily I made the find and was able to get out of there because uh, whatever that thing was, it was huge. <laughs> Loch Ness Monster might have been down uh, it, there. It, it probably a sturgeon would be my guess because yeah, yeah. we had some huge sturgeon out there in those rivers and one time it whacked me upside the head, almost knocked my mask off. <laughs> Good We're great. running full face mask too, so if that thing comes off, you know, you have no air or anything, you gotta get it back on. But uh yeah, pretty scary down there with the live stuff. I bet. I bet. So we'd recover vehicles, evidence, uh, you name it. Uh there was one uh murder case where a guy went out to a park there in the local town and he'd taken the weapon apart. It was I think a Colt nineteen eleven, and he threw all the parts in different places out in the pond we found every part of that gun wow down to like the trigger and and everything so when you're watching a movie and you see somebody throw the gun in most cases they just throw the whole thing at, yeah. into the water there's a chance that the guys like you might find that depending on where you throw it i mean some of these rivers and bridges they throw them off of you're you're never going to find something that small because you don't know where to start but yeah where it drifts a, a lot of times we had a good last scene point and mm-hmm. we could find it and then Later on, we got into the sonar portion of it, and that was one of my specialties. We went clear to Michigan, uh, Traverse City, Michigan, to learn the sonar and uh, got really good with that. So we saved a lot of bottom time, you know, having the sonar. That was really nice. Yeah, boy, that's fascinating. Um, I didn't realize we were going to get a, you know, a, a guest who had all these things that he'd done. <laughs> uh, Mark, you mentioned uh, the dairy. Yep. Um, yep. There, There's kind of them uh because you said farming is getting tougher in california uh, we've had some dairies move uh to this area from california and i yeah. think there's other states that have gotten even more uh, dairies that have moved from california as well here's an example of how the environmental stuff is so tough out there some of the larger dairies they take their dry cows and they truck them to texas where they have a place in texas then freshen them back up and then truck them back to California. So to make that cost of cost effective to do that, you can imagine how tough it is to farm out there. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Oh, well we we uh, uh, we enjoy our milk, so I hope they <laughs> hope they yeah. find a place to to have have dairies. But uh, I recently found a place here north of town where I can get raw cow's milk. And yeah, I love that. So. We've really enjoyed having that because we've been going, like, I think it was south of Gothenburg. And, you know, it's hard to get down there very often. So I was real happy to find a place here in town where we could get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, when we were uh, taking the news break, you and Brent were talking about how much radio's changed. So that that tells me that you have uh, some stories about when you worked in radio probably a number of years ago because you were talking about some things that, have been long gone in radio yeah 1980 i was a freshman in high school we had a radio program in our high school uh there was a retired dj that was a teacher there his name was dandy don lapan fantastic guy he really knew how to get people out of their shell he'd put you up in front of the class and get you public speaking and all that and uh, he was really good about that we really enjoyed the radio program it was way back in the day when we had the cart machines and the reel to reels and all that stuff and we did the morning bulletin for the school on the, the loudspeakers and stuff until my latter two years of high school, they switched over to video. So, But a local a neighboring high school had an actual radio station, and their guys were more geared towards electronics and stuff like that. They didn't really have any DJs. So 
some of our folks would go down to that high school and and do a radio program from four to six in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Our spot was on Wednesday, uh, me and a friend of mine. So we had fun doing that, and that was awesome. 90.9 KBDG. <laughs> uh, BDG stands for Bulldog, which was their mascot at the high school, but uh, that was a fun time. Yeah, there was, there was a, some of that going on. They actually had that here in Broken Bow uh, for a number of years. Uh, it's no longer there. Um, even college, unfortunately, we're even having some colleges that are dropping uh, broadcast journalism. Yeah. And With all the online stuff, it's, you know, the media is changing. So is. I, I'm glad to see you guys are still doing radio. I really love listening to you guys in the morning, and I watch you on YouTube a lot in the morning, having my coffee at home. And I love the old radio show. I used to listen, listen to it in the tractor when I'd be out here helping my uncle. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was telling Brent, it, it reminded me of the old Hee Haw uh, <laughs> radio station, the KORN, where they had the oh, egg, yeah. egg flats behind you on the wall, you know. <laughs> but uh, that was kind of neat back in the day here in kind of an old school radio program on on that was that was neat well we enjoy doing it and uh, people support it uh, you know what people are like around here yeah you know a lot of times people ask well how how does it, how does it work how do you guys keep going well we we have second to none support from our listeners and the businesses out there so we're very very fortunate mark to have that yeah a lot of good people around here yeah yeah you brought some hats in tell us about those uh just some uh hats with our YouTube channel name on it, um, we don't sell merch by standards like they do on YouTube, but mm-hmm. I make it available, and I, I give it to family and stuff. We don't make anything on any of the merchandise on the channel. It's all, uh, what you call it, uh, at cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so how, how do people find your, your YouTube? I mean, it's probably fairly easy, but... Yeah, you just go on YouTube, do a search for Mark Kelly Farm, which is me and my wife's name in one, Mark Kelly. Okay. And uh, it'll pop up. We have many, many videos. Um, some of them have gone kind of viral, like our, our Christmas candy video is what really launched us off because that's over 350,000 views now. So oh, wow. it's pretty crazy that one. Every... every Christmas time, that video just blows up. So we get a lot more traffic during the Christmas time. But uh, now as our subscriber base is larger, we're getting a lot lot more views now. So we're getting mm-hmm. out to a lot more people. And the algorithm, the way that works on YouTube, so you've got to be popular for your videos to even get out mm. because they won't recommend them if you don't get a lot of likes or views or whatever. So it's a, kind of a weird medium to navigate. But yeah, we're getting up there where we're able to get out to some more people and helping people out. We've got a fantastic uh, subscriber base. They're always reaching out and and thanking us for providing all the information to them and how to do stuff. So it's fantastic. Kelly recently got a freeze dryer, so she's obsessed with that. She's been freeze drying every day, <laughs> but really good stuff. I've been, really been impressed with the stuff she's been making. So nothing's gonna go to waste out of the garden this year. Yeah, well, there you go. You guys have a big garden. Uh. It's fairly good size, probably 60 by 100. Oh, wow. Yeah. We've got hailed out a little bit the last couple of years, so we're hoping for a good year this year so we can get some tomatoes in the root cellar because uh, we've been short on tomatoes lately. So hopefully we can – I'm planting a whole row of, of canning tomatoes this year trying to get uh, that built back up. But hopefully we'll have a good year for gardening. I think we're all hoping that, Mark. Yeah. Uh, boys, great having you in. Uh, stick around as long as you w- like. Um, and uh, we'll we'll have some guests come in, and uh, you can just see how we we do things. Now, since you were in radio, uh, I got to think probably you're kind of a music guy. So, yes. what what uh, is your preference in music? Uh, love the uh, classic rock and roll. Got to have that okay. country. Basically, anything but rap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to fit right in on this show. I, I've allowed <laughs> some country rap to get into my playlist a little bit like Colt Ford, stuff like that, but uh, rap's just not my thing, and when people pull up next to you down on the highway playing that stuff, and <laughs> like, nope. Yeah, we've got uh, some folks up in Brett and I's neighborhood that we don't have to look outside to, to, to see what's going on. We know a car's going by because the bass is, is yeah. rumbling the neighborhood. The big thing back in the day is when cassettes came about, was making mixtapes, and we loved, I bought my own board Oh. to make like professional mixtapes and I was selling them at school 
because everybody liked the way they were done. So yeah. Most everybody else was just, you know, recording right off the radio. So when you've got that intro where the DJ's talking on the song, so yeah, they, yeah. they liked the stuff that I was doing. It was fun. Well, we did a lot of uh, recording in this, like you say, in the 70s, um, buy an album, play it once onto tape, and then put the album away uh, so that, you know, the, the album didn't get all scratched up and then you'd pop the cassette in your car. And, yeah. yeah. And a lot of times you'd buy that album for that one song that you wanted on the album. So <laughs> you could take that one song off and with a lot of the other one hit wonders and put them on one tape. That was fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to take a time out and we're going to see if we've got guests uh, ready to come in. And we'll just go with the flow here. We've got a couple other things we want to tell folks about. So keep your dial set right here. Our guest today, Mark Cardoza, who purchased the uh, breakfast show at the Kyle Stringham Benefit. And Mark's going to hang with us as long as he likes. Quality custom embroidery. It is 844. You're listening to the go Get Up and Go Breakfast Show. And we have uh, Mark Cardoza with us. He is our special guest today. He actually purchased uh, his time on the breakfast show today just to hang out with us. He purchased that time uh, from the Kyle Stringham Benefit, which is fantastic. Uh, good, good idea, Mark. Good cause. Yeah, very good cause. And we understand uh, that Kyle is actually home uh, from some treatments and uh, getting a little respite here back at home again. So, Kyle, if you're listening, uh, keep it up, man. He's he's doing well and uh, got the support of the community, no doubt about that. I almost didn't get the purchase because we went to the movie that night because mm -hmm. I, I never missed the chance to watch the Blues Brothers on the big screen. There you go. <laughs> so we got out of the movie, and it was getting late, and there was like a 10 o'clock cutoff, and my wife had been bidding it on, on it for me. So we got out of service going south out of town because once you go over the big hill, there's no service. And I got home where we are back, had Wi-Fi again, and it was just after 10, and I looked, and we had got outbid by somebody. So just out of the outside chance, I bid again real quick, and it took it. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> like I was getting something over on somebody. And then they contacted me, said I won. So I got a hold of the lady that bid before me. I said, hey, I don't want you to feel cheated because my bid came in after 10. So, she said, oh, no, 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 no problem. And then the people running the benefit said, if it was still open, you could bid. So I kind of felt bad, but it worked out. It was nice of Glad you. Glad to be here. Yeah, nice of you to call and see make things yeah, right I, there. I wanted to make sure she was okay with that. Yeah. Uh, anything else that you, what, you know, you've probably been thinking about coming on the air. We've asked you a few questions. Brent may have a question or two. Um, and I'm thinking maybe there might be something that we haven't asked you about that you wanted to mention today. No, I'm just having fun with you guys. Uh, I think we basically covered everything. Brent into the fact that I probably got some real good stories out of law enforcement in California, yeah. but some of those I cannot share. <laughs> I'm sure the statute of limitations have run out on some of it, but... Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it's never a dull moment out there. I bet not. The 25 years there would be equal to 50 somewhere else, I'm sure. <laughs> I toured the jail here locally when Carmen's mom worked there. She was like a jailer there, and their jail here in Broken Bow is the size of our intake area in our facility out there. We had uh, anywhere up to 2,200 inmates in custody every day. 2,200? Yes. My goodness. We had four facilities at one time. We got back down to three, but it was crazy. Right before I first started, we had the main jail downtown uh, was rated for 300 and 363, something like that, and we had over 900 inmates in that facility, people sleeping on the floors, and That's... we got sued federally, and we had to go back down to our max cap, but... Then they started building other facilities to house everybody. Yeah. But I see Gavin Newsom's closing prisons now, which I don't know how he's able to do that because, you know, a few years ago we didn't have enough space. So I think he's just letting everybody out. So that's why he's able to close <laughs> prisons now, which is not the way to go about things. But uh, That's a little scary. Yeah, uh, it is. I think, I think that's a problem nationwide uh, even here in nebraska they're overcrowded and then they finally voted i think to to build um but it's taken a long time i have a feeling that uh the folks down at the uh police station at the jail here probably like it if we said you know they could use a little more room there too i think they've been lobbying for that for uh, a number of years 
um, because, uh, you know, there just this seems to be more, more uh, court cases, more time in, in jail for people. And, and hopefully, and maybe you have a story or two about people that you saw go through the jail system that actually um, m- made a change. Because a lot of times we hear about, well, people go to jail, uh, the system isn't working, and I, I think there's something to that. But there are people that get through that that make changes. We had a guy in our facility, when I th- I had first started, I had only been there about a year or so, and he was the biggest problem we had. He was so far in the hole, they had to mail him daylight, I think. <laughs> and uh, he was he was so far on discipline that we had him on what's called an SID diet, standard issu- institutional diet, which is kind of like a meatloaf type thing with no flavor at all. And that's what you got when you're on disciplinary diet. And... Uh, I was working the floor one day, and they forgot to send the disciplinary diet, diet up. So I said, oh, heck with it. I'll just give him a regular tray. He threw that regular tray against the wall, splattered it all over the place. He says, where's my SID diet? But uh, this guy, biggest problem we had for years. I recently went out to California to visit the kids like two weeks ago. This same guy walks up to me in a restaurant, and I immediately recognized him. I'm like, Wow. And he started telling me how he'd been out. He's doing church mission trips and all this other stuff. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Because I would have thought this this guy would have never been a productive member of society. But something switched in his head and he got it together. And I would have never thought out of all the people, I'd have bet my paycheck that that guy was never going to be out. Yeah. So it can happen. It can happen. Yeah. The and- problem with California, most everything has to do with drugs narcotics and it doesn't matter what the crime is it all comes back to narcotics whether it's murder theft or whatever you're either stealing something to get your stuff mm-hmm. or somebody's made you mad and you know you do something else but it all revol- it all revolves around drugs and then the other problem is they raised the um, felony rate it used to be like 450 dollars anything over that was a felony like if you stole something right. or caused damage, right. they raised it up almost to $1,000. So you can literally go to any store, take anything you want and leave. And I've seen, I'm sure you've seen that on the news. Yes. And because it's a misdemeanor, you don't do any time in jail. They give you a sight and release, so you're out. And then if you don't go to your court case, it's still a misdemeanor warrant. So you don't do any time on that. They keep kicking you back out. And then even if you're sentenced to a misdemeanor, uh, Misdemeanors up to a year in jail, anything over that felony, go to, go to prison. Even if you're sentenced, your time serves and you get out because mm-hmm. they won't keep you. So there's no, there's no, uh, what you call it, uh, punishment anymore for misdemeanors. So a lot of that's just going unchecked in California. It's really tough. And that's why maybe you see, like you said, with uh, maybe you see on the news that there's a bunch of people rushing and. And, yeah, and steal a number of things, and if they keep it under a thousand dollars, they're just yep. They're wow. They don't do any time in jail. Yeah, and is that because of the Over, you, overpopulation? Start, overpopulation yep. of our jails. Uh, there was a, a thing put through called Prop Forty Seven out in California, which changed the way that jails worked, and you could release people out sooner. Mm-hmm. All of your credits, you know, got raised and. Uh, it was just crazy. It really, really reformed the jail thing out in California where you don't do any time at all. It's it just terrible. You're well, and the other part of that, then if they, if they overfill the jails, then, then they have a federal, then they have a lawsuit. Yep. Right? yep. So it, they're kind of, kind of sandwiched. What there. people didn't realize too is they would always say, well, the people in prison are a lot worse than the ones in jail. Well, that's not the case because everybody that goes to prison comes through jail first. You start out at the local level. Yeah, county. And then not till you're sentenced do you go to prison. So we have all those people. we got the worst of the worst coming through the county level. So mm-hmm. uh, the people that do the work here down at your county uh, sheriff's office here, they're seeing all all the people that, that actually go to prison. They're seeing the same people. They see them first. And yeah. they probably see them more than once in a lot oh, of cases. It's, it's, yeah. We had three generations of people out there that I dealt with mm-hmm. in the same family. That uh, it's like a heritage thing. They, you know, that's the thing. You all the males come to jail. That's how they live. Yeah, and some of them live better in jail than they do at home. 
Well, there you go. In jail, you don't have to pay your cable bill. People do your laundry for you. Your meals are provided, your dental, your medical, you know. Hmm. Wow. Well, uh, then you are glad to be out here in Nebraska. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, the funny thing out here that we first came across was if you're within 20 miles, people call you neighbor. You know, you don't yeah. have to be just yeah. the person down the road. So, And then uh, before you meet people, they know everything about you before you meet them. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, you're those folks from California. Yeah. And I'd be like, no, we're from Nebraska. <laughs> we, we heard about you at a yeah. such and such place, right? Yeah, so-and-so told me this, so-and-so <laughs> told me that. Now, you're related to? The bum oh, garners. Yes. Yeah. All the bum garners are my cousins. Uh-huh. So, uh We've we've enjoyed going to the tumbleweed. You know, when we would come out, uh, we would help out. Mom would always sit in the back and roll the silverware, you uh-huh. know, would help out with that. And <laughs> so, yeah, I got lots of good relatives here. We really love watching their kids play sports. Uh, Sawyer just went to college last year. We loved watching him wrestle. But now we got Tate. Uh-huh. Uh, he just got through with a real good year, went to state. And then uh, his sister Lily's coming up. We can't wait for softball. Fantastic pitcher. We love yeah. going watching softball. And then. Uh, Jake, he's coming up into high school, so we'll be able to watch him, uh, whatever he's doing. So it's a fun time. We try to stay with the, the high school age kids because otherwise it gets to be way too oh, much. Oh, man. Yeah. So we, all the kids are eventually going to be in high school, so <laughs> we kind of focus on the high school sports. So. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah makes but sense. we have a good time doing that. We go, we go to all the sports stuff. Good. Well, it's been a real pleasure having you in, Mark, and uh, appreciate your purchase and then spending time with us here today. It's been fun. Um, and, uh, you know, you can always come back. You're welcome here anytime. Anytime you guys need a, a chair to fill, let me know. I'd, I'd love to come back and help you guys out. So, All right. Well, you'll have a chair because you told me off the air that you're a Bears fan. Oh, so there you go. As yep. far as I'm concerned, you'll always have a seat at the table. Since 1984, we'll get, baby. Oh, man. Oh, we'll boy. get uh, We'll get Shipe in here, and we'll really have a nice oh, conversation. Oh, there you go. I have to wear some of my Bears gear. I think I'll go fishing that day. <laughs> Thanks, Not guys. a Bears fan? Oh, don't get Dave. St- <laughs> Dave's been a fan of just about every team oh. that uh, that gets under my skin. I Let's love those Lions, way. man. Yeah, here we go. The Lions, Lions are good. Yeah, then it, earlier it was the Packers. Well, I'm kind of a fair-weather Bears fan. When they're winning is when I watch. And uh-huh. I couldn't tell you who's quarterback right now or none of that, but... When they're winning, I'll tune back in, and we'll get back into it. But there you go. It's it's rough. It's it's not easy being a Bears fan. No, sometimes. it is not. Well, you know, Mark it keeps you humble. The funny thing about that, don't feel bad about not knowing who the quarterback is because they change every year. Sometimes, <laughs> they, right now, we really don't have one. Yeah, sometimes twice so, in the same year. Yeah. I was surprised how many Bear fans were here when I moved here, and I'm like, oh, they must, they're kind of the local team. It's either a little bit Broncos or the Bears. You're kind of in the middle. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Kansas City, of course. Thanks a lot, Mark. You're welcome. It's a pleasure having you here. We'll nice take being. A, you bet. We'll take a quick time out. Homeowners, landlords, and business owners of Custer County and beyond. Is your lawn begging for a makeover? Sharon Lawn Care and Sprinkler. All right, folks, we made it home. Had a good time at the radio station. It was uh, a lot of fun. The uh, the guys are great down there. And uh, it was all for a good cause. We uh, were real happy to donate to that fundraiser and we couldn't do that without all of you folks tuning in to the channel and supporting us in the way that you do just by showing up so uh, money went to a good cause I hope you enjoyed the video and we hope you come back and see us here at Mark Kelly Farm we love you guys stay safe stay healthy